Hey guys, this is Alex C with TFP TV, and the topic of today's video is going to be five overly complicated guns. As you can see, we're just going to go right into it with a wonderfully complicated G41M. These rifles are bizarre to say the least. Uh, the requirements were that they not have a hole drilled for a gas system, they have no moving parts on the outside of the gun, and they'd be able to function as a bolt action rifle in case of emergency. Mauser actually met all these requirements. You can see the bolt handle right there resembles that of a Mauser rifle. Um, they met the requirements. They made about 4,000 of these is what I've heard because the G41 Walther design ignored some of the requirements and uh, actually was more successful. Here you can see me working the bolt just as if I was using a Mauser rifle and uh, it feels a lot like one. These rifles are spectacularly complicated because of the gas trap slash bang system. You can also see in here the guts. They do have a rotating bolt different than the flapper lock G41 rifles, um, which is arguably better. Flapper locking has some issues uh, on these guns. Uh, again, you can see me working the bolt here, and it actually disengages the spring, so when you work the bolt, you're not actually working against spring pressure. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the G41M, Ian McCollum of Forgotten Weapons has a great overview of one he did at the Rock Island auction. Um, he really goes into the details of how it works, and it is a doozy, as he says. But let's move on to the next overly complicated gun. Of course, next I chose a gun that's kind of common, but has an element that I would say is overly complicated. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I'd like to make that clear in this video. None of these guns are necessarily bad for being overly complicated. But this is, of course, a Nagant revolver, an M1895 Nagant revolver adopted by the Russians. The Nagant revolver is very interesting because it features a round that is unusual by any metric. Um, you'll see here coming up how the round is is very strange. The bullet actually doesn't crest above the brass cartridge case. You can't see the bullet. It almost looks like the round has already been fired. The cylinder also holds seven rounds as opposed to six like most revolvers. And there is a very good reason for the bullet being set like that. And that is, of course, what I'm about to show you here. When you pull the hammer back on these revolvers, the cylinder actually moves forward to create a gas seal, and coupled with the unique ammunition, allows you to get about 50 more feet per second out of it. So that gas seal is nice as far as gaining power, but um, I don't know, I kind of doubt the utility. It seems like a conventional revolver would have been cheaper and a little more reliable, because uh, I'll link to our Nagant revolver video, and you can see it in action right here. Um, it, does uh, not work too well, and I've also heard a rumor that you can suppress these. I'm not sure, but that is the internet uh, talking to me. Okay, so next we've got the Boberg pistol. The Boberg pistols are really cool. They're very compact. They have a really cool feature. The barrel length is actually quite long uh, because they're almost like a bullpup pistol. Um, however, they are very complex. You can see here, I'm going to cock the pistol and the barrel rotates. A rotating barrel is not unusual. Um, some Beretta pistols have them. The Colt All-American 2000, I believe, had a rotating barrel. Not that unusual. But here you can see the magazine has no provisional load cartridges in the front. That is, of course, because you load cartridges backwards. You load them nose first instead of rim first. And I'll show you why here coming up, but this is pretty strange and it throws a lot of people for a loop. There's also no magazine follower, which is strange. Anyways, the reason for that, I'll show you. I disassembled the pistol here. Disassembly's not too bad. You just flip this little doodad here, the switch, kind of like a SIG pistol. Everything comes forward. And then there's a switch, just like there is on a general purpose machine gun, um, like an M1919 or a PKM that withdraws the bullets, rotates them upwards, and puts them into the chamber. Now this, of course, has led to some problems with bullets actually getting uh, ripped out of the cartridge uh, brass case. So use, use the ammunition they recommend. Um, also here you can see the, I guess what you'd call a locking block that you remove to field strip the gun. Um, Boberg in the manual recommends putting grease in the surfaces. I believe it's molybdenum grease in the surfaces of the, the cam surfaces of the block and on the stud on the barrel. Um, so grease your Boberg if you have one. And uh, fully field stripped, it does look kind of weird. I couldn't figure out how to remove the barrel, and I don't have the instruction manual, so that's about as far as I could get it. But uh, let's see what we have up next. That's, of course, going to be the wonderful SIG 510. This is actually a SIG AMT, but it applies to all the uh, SIG uh, pattern rifles of this type. And we have done a video on this gun, and it was very fun to shoot. Very awesome gun. 
Um, very great shooter. I can't really praise this rifle enough, especially for a large 762 by 51 battle rifle. It is light, shoots well, not the most attractive firearm, but I really, really like shooting it. And the beer keg charging handle is pretty fun to operate, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, another unusual feature is it's got this winter trigger that you flip down if you're wearing heavy gloves. I also like it because it gives you some extra leverage if you're trying to shoot it very accurately. As for complexity, if you look at the guts of the system here, this is actually the bolt, you can see it has rollers, but it also has flappers. Um, I've seen this described as a flapper-locked gun, however, it's not really flapper-locked. That was more or less to circumvent the patents on roller locking. Um, here's a close-up. You can see the flaps in there kind of retain the rollers. So it's not really flapper locked, but you can see what they are going for, and I believe they successfully skirted HK or whoever set me's patents. Uh, you can also see the Silly Straw extractor spring that's uh, pretty characteristic of Swiss complexity. Now it has two extractors. It's got, I guess, what you'd call a primary and a secondary extractor. You can see on the bottom it had a uh, primary extractor. Next up is going to be the broom handle pistol. Now the broom handle pistols, I really like. This proof mark here is very cool. That means it was accepted into the military in World War I, the German military, or Prussian, I, yeah. Um, great pistols. They're short recoil operated. They're very complex. They actually only have one screw, and that's to retain the grip. Very beautiful pistols. I love shooting these. The muzzle flash is incredible. They fire a hot little round, too. 30 Mauser is a, is a very stout round. There are so also are, of course, select fire versions. This is an M712 Schnell for you. I was planning on actually field stripping one of these. I have done it in the past, um, but it is an absolute nightmare. Here's about as far as I like to take it down because they are ludicrously difficult to take apart. So I figured a picture would do. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe on a Friday field strip, I'll make a 30-minute video on how to take it down. But anyways, this is Alex Seat with TFB TV. I really appreciate you watching this five overly complicated guns video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe hit that subscribe button if you liked what you saw. Until next time, Alex C. signing off.